Hey, thanks for visiting Duckman Cycles of VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> uh, and we're back today with my 1956 Volkswagen Beetle, also known as Eleanor. And I'm actually inside of her right now. She's up on top of a body dolly, but I'm standing up inside of here. And there's just enough room for me to stand up in here. Uh, I gotta squat down a little bit in the front section. But when I'm towards the back, I can actually stand up straight. And this is one of the reasons why I've got it up on a body dolly, why I'm doing some of the interior welding. It being six foot three and 250 pounds, it's really hard to move around inside of a Beetle. It's not bad to drive, really it's not, but when you're actually working inside of it, it's, it's practically impossible. Now, as you notice, this windshield is only about seven inches high. It's not very tall at all. And that's because this car has had a major roof chop. The reason why I did that, and ordinarily I wouldn't chop up a 1956 Ulva windowed Beetle, but this car was so badly rotted out from Hurricane Ivan, submerging it under six feet of seawater. And then the previous owner let it sit outside for 10 years and it, it literally, it busted in half. So as I always say in the beginning of my videos, you know, I did the best I could with the parts that I had and I built it up the best that I could with whatever I could make or fabricate on it to make it look like it was a 1956 Beetle. Uh, the goal is to, to fool people. And I mean, if you're, you are really familiar with the cars or maybe if you can see two of them side by side, you're probably going to be able to tell the difference. But the goal here is to, to make the casual passerby think, you know, what the hell kind of Beetle is that? Well, it's a 1956 sports edition. Yeah, Volkswagen put this thing out. <laughs> And the reason why I didn't use a lot of original parts is, number one, they've really gone up in price. They've gotten expensive, and a lot of the stuff, I'd rather leave it on the market and see somebody restore an original car with the original parts. So I just, that's, that feels better to me. So that's how I dealt with that. Not a single car passes by until I record a video, and then I get all the car noise. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to continue welding the inside of this car. Uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that little dingle belly down and exit the subscribe button. Bloop, it's right down there in the bottom. That gives you updates every time that I upload a new video, and you're going to want to do that, because lots more updates on this car, as well as a lot of other projects that I work on. It's not just Volkswagens. I also have a Doodle Bastard mini bike and a CR500 that I'm working on, and I've got the CR500 on hold right now because I'm trying to get this car together for the car show. It's coming up, and I think it's about... I think it's just under four weeks away, so I mean it's coming up real soon. So I gotta focus on this as much as I can and get as much of this car as I can put back together so we can get it in that show. And don't forget, got other channels, VV the Duck VV and Skeeter the Duck, check them out. I'm gonna have some of my other videos coming up on VV the Duck VV this week because I have a few other tech session videos I need to upload, and I've also got my trip video where I went on vacation. So you'll see my brother and seeing my dad and uh, how I almost got shot while I was on vacation. You're, you're gonna wanna see that. I mean, it's, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. I mean, you, you get quite a surprise out of it. So anyways, thanks for watching. Here comes the intro. <laughs> Well, I can tell I did this one in the dark. Oh yeah, I had a lot of burn through that I couldn't see the other day, and, and I really thought I did a good job on it, but no, I really made a sloppy mess. So I'm gonna have to clean some of that up and get that straightened out because it, yeah, it looks pretty poopy. So I gotta fill some of the holes in here and, and get that get that right. It also needs some wire brushing. You can see all the uh, ash and stuff on it from the flux core weld that I'm using still. Uh, I'm trying to use the rest of that up, and once that's gone, then I'm gonna use a regular gas bottle weld, and my welds won't look look so poopy anymore. One of the reasons people criticize is they don't understand flux core welding. They haven't used it before, so as a result, they don't understand that it just doesn't look like regular welding, and, and it usually looks a little crappy, and it kind of makes a mess, and that's just that's how it works. Is it a weak weld? Well, no, you get a good quality weld out of it, it's just it's not particularly appealing. And as I said, these welds right here, you're not going to see them anyway because this gets all covered with carpet and headliner, so it's going to get lost in there anyway. I don't even have to grind it down, to be honest with you. I mean, I could actually just leave it the way it is, but I'm going to clean it up a little bit uh, just because, and we'll see what happens as far as the headliner is concerned. I don't know what I'm going to do in here yet. I was thinking a couple different exotic materials. I know everybody's always giving me suggestions to do bamboo or some other crap, but, uh, you know, I... I I think this car, I'm going to try to make it look like it was a deluxe edition, some kind of original Volkswagen design, so we'll see what I come up with from there. So anyways, um, we need to cut along this line here and pull these Clecos out, fill all the Cleco holes. I need to cut along this line and weld that together, of course. And after that, 
I need to fill the K-hole, and I keep talking about this damn thing, but it bothers me so much. This is this is just a pain in the ass to deal with, and I really don't want to deal with it, but I'm going to try to get that done today, too, just the same. Somebody else pointed out that there are some pinholes up here in the roof, and it is true. I don't know if you can see them, but that's probably because there's too much light in here right now. But, yeah, there are a couple pinholes in the welds up through here, and the reason why is I very, very quickly welded this roof together to get it ready for the car show last year, and uh, that's just the way I left it. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad from the top side, but, yes, on the inside, you can actually see pinholes of light through it. So I need to go over again with the welder and then properly smooth it out. And also, uh, there's a little bit of a dip in here, and I'm feeling this. And it feels like it's really not so much in the metal. I think uh, some of the donor roof actually had a lot of Bondo on it. It was probably uh, dented. And as a matter of fact, yeah, I can feel some of the dents in it. So I think there's probably a lot of filler on it. That's one of the reasons why this piece, which doesn't have any filler, has a little bit of a dip. So I'll planish it out a little bit, and we'll go ahead and get it welded in. I still need to do some grinding on some of this stuff and get that straightened out. So let's go ahead and get started here. You know, let's talk more work. I need to get some accomplishment here. That car show is coming up. I want this car back on its pan sometime really soon. I don't want to wait until the last minute like I did last year, just, just haphazardly welding crap together and making a mess out of things. This year, I want to actually have this thing done ahead of time and have it ready to go. So all I have to do is just hook up the tow bar to it and drag it over to the show. And if I'm lucky, if I'm lucky... Maybe it'll even run, and maybe I'll even be driving it around at the car show. Doesn't mean I'll be driving on the public streets, doesn't mean it'll be road ready, but maybe I'll be lucky enough to drive it around the show. So we'll see what happens with that. Anyways, thanks for watching. We're going to go ahead and uh, start doing some work here and see what we can get done. All right, cutting along the way. Started way over here, working this way. I pull out the Clecos as I come up to them, and it's really hard to push this saw in all the way because it's actually part of the... Um, gutter to the loofers is actually right behind there so I can't cut very deep and I mangled up a couple blades as a result so I busted up a few of them. Yeah sure I could probably try to cut a blade down and use a shorter blade. I actually did try that but for some reason they just don't cut as well. I don't know it's always easier to just work with the tip and come in at a real steep angle like this and uh, I should say shallow angle that's actually a shallow angle and uh, just slowly work your way over this way until you hit the next hole and then you line up the metal by just pushing it together and put a little tack on it. That's a really ugly friggin' tack, but I also didn't sand off the paint before I started on that, so it had to burn through that, and yeah, it doesn't like to weld to paint. Pretty obvious. Anyways, I'm gonna keep on cutting. I'm gonna run through there, and uh, then I'm gonna hit it with a sander, or wire wheel anyway, and get off as much of the paint as possible, and then weld through it just the same like we did up here, as well as touching up some of this mess that I made last night in the dark. <laughs> Okay, using a flashlight here, it's a little hard to see, but I got that weld across that back panel completely done. You might notice it's a little sparkly or a little shiny. I started doing some of the grinding on some of the high spots. Like I said before, I'm really not going to hit it too much because it's going to be covered by carpet and headliner, so it's never going to be seen. I started to hit the inside of here and did a little bit of grinding on that, but at this point, I've lost light. <laughs> so I can't really see that well anymore. So, I think we're going to end the video here. So please, everybody, like, comment, subscribe. Please pluck that little dingle belly down there next to the subscribe button so that we get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out my other channels, VV the Duck VV, as well as Skeeter the Duck. Join the Facebook group page, Duckman Cycles at VW Garage. Join that group page. There'll be a discussion about Eleanor, as well as the Doodle Bastard, which is way over there, and whatever anything else anybody else decides to share. So thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. You fans are the ones that drive me. If you want to email me, DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Later. This right here is one of those roadside things that I just always meant to get a video by myself in front of. And yes, it's a giant Volkswagen bus. <laughs> There's really nothing Volkswagen about it. It's larger than life, and it's actually the entrance to both the restaurant and a little gift shop over here at a local uh, gas station. We'll have a walk inside. But That's another Crocker Gator. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Just kind of sitting there. Need to find something to poke him with. Give him a little poke. A little smaller than the other one. <laughs>